Hey everybody, Jordan here coming to you from Mount Charleston. It's good to be with you tonight. Um, and it is, uh, we are moving into the holidays. You know, Thanksgiving is coming up in a couple of days here in the United States. Uh, but I just want to focus on fundamentals um, as I usually do. Um, I want to go over two just little simple case studies of things that, two things that um, I experienced today um, that I think, you know, I, I get a lot of my training material from uh, the questions that are asked of me throughout the week, real life, you know, in the field, people that are, you know, trying to build their business, they're struggling or they're trying to build their business, they're trying to solve a problem. And so they'll message me or they'll, or I'll get on a Zoom with them. So I met a woman at the contact mapping seminar in uh, Denver a couple, a few weeks ago, and um, she wanted to schedule a coaching call with me. So I, I set up a coaching call and um, she's in a product company, a supplement company, and her husband is a builder. He's like a, a general contractor. And I want you to really, like, I'm going to ask you to drop a comment um, in just a minute on how, what you would, how you would coach this woman. Like, so think about if she was asking you for advice, what would you do? So she came to me and she said, you know, her husband's a general contractor. They have a lot of, they have a lot of rental real estate. She's an attractive, smart, well-educated, beautiful, connected woman. She's connected with a lot of really influential people. And she has all the makings of someone who would be wildly successful in her business, in her network marketing business. And her sponsor, by the way, is an iconic woman figure in our profession. And she's received all the best training that anyone could ever want. Some of you might relate to this. She's even enrolled in expensive coaching programs. And in a full year, one full year, she sponsored two people and they both quit. And she's frustrated and she wanted to meet with me. So she booked a call with me. And my question for you is if you were to give her like one just short piece of advice based on what I've just told you, what would it be? Or what would your observation be about her? Like, what is it that she might need to get over or learn or do that would help her be successful. She's got all the makings of someone success that's successful. She's been to all the trainings. She keeps going to training. She's got a coach and she's still only sponsored two people. So I, there were there were a couple things that and so drop a comment. Let me know what you would what advice you might give her. So that my observation for her and I told her this is that she's comfortable. She's not hungry at all because she's got everything that she wants in her life. And so I asked her, you know, why are you doing the business? And she said she needs to prove to her husband that she can be productive as well. I'm like, okay, that's a start. And um, I don't know that we accomplished anything on there because she's heard everything before that I've told her, I, you know, she's going to have to just dig really deep and find out why she's doing this so she can find that hunger in her because that's what it takes. Anybody who's ever made it in any business has a drive in them to succeed. Now, some of you love the social aspect of the business. You love being here every week and seeing everybody and talking. Some of you are doing it to make a little extra money. But if you ever want to build a, you know, a thriving, growing business, you need to have some level of drive. It has to come from somewhere. And usually that comes from something that you want to create in your life or a big problem you want to solve. Um, for me, this company, you know, I loved, obviously, the philosophy, Cody's philosophy. I didn't do this just for fun. When I met Cody, I saw a big opportunity. And my, hung my hunger came from the fact that my last company, I had a big income and my last company went away and I was bleeding by about $20,000 a month. So I had a drive to replace that income and, and turn things around so that I could continue to live the lifestyle that I was living. So she's comfortable. And so she's going to have to shift that energy. And the second thing is she's afraid that the people in her circle won't be interested in network marketing because they're too successful. And that's just not true. Many people that are doing well, at least from a perspective of what outsiders view them as, many of them are dealing with their own internal battles around lack of freedom because they're owned by their businesses. And when they hear about passive income, they want it. But even people that have achieved big,
big success in their lives and in their business. They're driving the fancy cars and they're in a big, beautiful house. But in a lot of cases, they're miserable because they're working so hard just to look good around everybody else. And they're trapped in their businesses. So when we show them something that might give them an out, they get excited. Some do, some won't, but she's, she's her own worst enemy. She's the, she is the reason why she's not growing in her business because she's got conversations going on with herself that are keeping her from stepping into her greatness and doing what it is she says she wants to do, but she's really not ready. And until she makes that decision that her, how she looks is less important than her dream, as long as she gets a hold of what that is, until she gets to that point, her business is going to continue to do nothing. <laughs> so I told her that there were three things that I told her that she needs to do. Number one is she needs to tap into her dream. Why is she even doing this? What does she need to prove? Like she needs to figure out what she needs to prove to other people. Like Tom Hopkins used to say that everybody that's ever been successful in business had to prove something to someone. And when I go back and look at like the reason I built my first successful business, I, there were a few people. One was I was a sales trainer, but I was making under $20,000 a year at America West Airlines. And that felt, I felt like a fraud. I'm making $20,000 a year less than, and I'm a sales trainer. That makes no sense at all. But I was the one training the sales, the, the, the travel sales reps at America West Airlines. And I needed to prove to them that I could do, that I could be somebody. And then also my father, you know, my father was never a fan of network marketing. And I needed to prove to my father that this was a legitimate business and that I could make it succeed because he would always tell me, to, to stop working my business because for years I never made money, stop working my business and get a real job. And in my dad's final 15 years on this earth, he loved network marketing. He'd ask me every time I saw him, he'd ask me for more copies of Beach Money. He loved that I, could, that I bought him a brand new car and delivered it to his home. He loved that I took him on cruises and flew him. I, I paid for his flights. Um, and and uh, all that kind of stuff. We went on multiple cruises, but he loved network marketing in his final 15 years on the earth. But I had to prove to him, and that was in some ways my drive. And then I had my dream on top of it. There were, there were things that I wanted to do in my life that I couldn't do on my fixed, limited income. And I'm not, <laughs> I'm not even going to say that. I'm not even going to say that. So Three things she needs to do. Number one is to tap into her dream. Um, why is she even doing this? And the second thing is she has to have 100 times more activity. She needs to start doing three, five, three to five presentations per day or send out three to five samples per day. In our case, if she was working with our company, I would say you need to be sending out three cards a day and letting other people watch you do it, people that aren't involved, um, or set up a free account for somebody and have them send a card or show them the sales page, but she's got to have a hundred times more activity because, you know, she's told me she was building her business, but as I dug deeper and asked questions, I found out she's really not really super active in introducing the business to new people. And the third thing is she needs to stop trying to figure things out. Um, I got a message from a guy today that has been in network marketing for a really long time. He was with us and then he left us and then he came back and he's trying to figure everything out. Figure everything out. There's nothing to figure out. Um, she's not doing anything wrong. She just needs to do more of something and uh, stop trying to do it. Stop trying to learn how to do it and have a plan, simple plan, and just work it. I recommended that she buy 300 samples. I know that's a big commitment, but I she needs to make that commitment and then follow through on it. Buy 300 samples of her favorite product and start messaging people and asking them if they'll try it out. She's very successful. They, they have a lot of money. Money's not the issue. She just wants to prove to herself that she can do something. So I suggested she buy 300 samples of her favorite product 
start messaging people and ask them if they'll try it and provide feedback and just keep adding people to the list until all 300 are gone. And I told her, I said, if you do that, you're going to have 30 new personally sponsored distributors or consultants in your company and your business is going to start to grow. So in order to do that, if she did three per day for 100 days and then just follow up like crazy, it's just upping that level of activity and getting out of your own way, like having a very simple plan and then just doing it every day, no matter what. It's like it's not complicated to get in physical shape. It's just doing simple things every day, making a commitment for doing it, doing it for a period of time and then sticking with your commitment being true to your word. So, you know, like, it's like, I'm gonna work out five days a week for, you know, there's a lot of people, do, I'm gonna work out five days a week for the next two years. And then you just do it. It's a simple plan. You're gonna be in be way better shape than if you do it when you feel like it. And it's no different in our business. So over the holidays, three things. What are you going to do over the holidays? You're going to send out your holiday card. Maybe you're going to share, uh, share something from your promptings pro app every day. Maybe you're going to do it because it's the holidays. You're going to do two a day or three a day, and you're going to stick with that commitment. Make sure you do it. And you're going to meet one new person per day or whatever, something simple, a simple plan and, and, and make a commitment to do that for a period of time and then just do it. So the second thing is I got a text message from a guy that I just recently sponsored. Now, check this out. He said, I'm reading it to you word for word. Hi, Jordan. I studied and took notes on the awakening and the magic happens in the one to one. And that those are two of my YouTube videos that are from our Monday night training. The Q&A, seven ways to get to yes, doesn't show up on either YouTube or Internet. He didn't find it. So I sent it to him. He said, I did what we discussed with the prospect for the sock opportunity. I took a selfie with him. I had him enter his address and I sent him a sock card, thought he would be thrilled. He wasn't. Not sure why. Probably it was me. Not a good presentation. I was expecting that I'd done one uh, that I'd done. I, did, I was expecting that I'd one call close on the spot. So he was planning on having that person. He was planning on doing a selfie, having that person watch him send that card to him, and he was planning on closing that person on the spot. And that's what he was saying in his text message here. And then he says, like I do with life insurance. And he says, I didn't. He wasn't into it, neither sock nor the opportunity. Guess I have a lousy presentation, obviously. So I definitely need training, not understanding everything or how to do what you suggest. Can we set up a Zoom for this call next week? Well, drop in the comments. What advice would you give to him? I'll tell you what I gave him, but what advice would you give to this guy? He was he did one demonstration his first time. He's only sent out a few cards. It was a selfie. I don't know what he wrote on the back of the card. And the guy wasn't interested. He wasn't thrilled. He was not interested in the opportunity, not interested. And he said, you know, he must have just gave a bad presentation because he was expecting to close the guy on the first uh, meeting like he does in life insurance, which is crazy to me because I've in this world, I have seen very few people that can close and get a deal in the on the first meeting. I just I don't see that happening very often. So. I asked him about that. I'm like, you really, you're closing on the first, you've got skills that I haven't seen in a long time. If you can close in life insurance policy on the first meeting. So what advice would you give him? Drop it in the comments. What would you tell him to do? Um, and the reason I'm doing this is because it gets you to think like when people ask you questions, it gets you to think about, you know, that getting into your resource, the resourceful part of your mind, like, what can I, what advice can I create from this question to help this person grow to solve the problem? Well, I told him, I said, I've done 5,000 presentations since I've been with this company and I signed up about one out of nine. So I've signed up 600 people in 18 years mm -hmm. and one out of nine. I'm not. And then the second thing is rarely do I sign Do I sign somebody up on the first look? I've usually sent them two or three cards. I've usually messaged them a few times. I've sent them a, a video or two. I've sent them the sales page from the Promptings Pro app. So they've 
received a number of connect a number of touches from me over a period of days, weeks, or even months before they pull the trigger. But I'm playing the long game and I'm following up with people and staying connected to them and putting my heart into cards and all those kinds of things. So, you know, part of it, this is a this is a great example because I would say a lot of people, in fact, I was that guy, the same guy, you know, I'd get involved in a company and get two or three no's and quit. I would say a lot of the people that you sign up are do the same thing. They talk to one person and they don't even show them and they do it one time or two times and then they're done. They disappear, they vaporize. So it's important for people to have a realistic expectation upfront on, on what it's going to take. That's why being on this training every week is so important because people forget, they forget what it takes. So what, what advice would you give him? I gave him the advice of it's going to take you more than one meeting or one card or one, you know, conversation to sign somebody up. And also you're going to have to up your game. You can't just expect to have success after one presentation. It's not that you're doing anything wrong. I told him that I said, you're not doing anything wrong. You just need to do more of it until you get good at it. And even if you're good at it, you're probably only going to sign up one out of 10 or 12 people, or maybe, maybe less. If you're really good, maybe you can sign up one out of five. You know, I, I used to sign up about one out of five, but I was dealing with a lot more warm market and now it's, I'm meeting new people, but have to turn them into warm market. So hope this is helpful. Tonight, I wanted to talk about everything I do is designed to get customers because I posted that as a meme the other day. I said, everything I do is designed to get customers. Well, the truth is not everything I do is designed to get customers. I don't brush my teeth in the morning every day to get customers. I usually don't send cards to get customers. I send cards every day, multiple cards, but I don't send cards to get customers. Some of the cards are designed to get customers, probably 10%. I don't fly helicopters to get customers. I don't go on vacation to get customers, although sometimes I do get customers on vacation. Uh, but when I'm in work mode, yes, most of what I do is to get customers, whether that be getting a customer or getting an affiliate that leads to customers. So I'm going to give you seven things that I do when I'm really laser focused. And this past uh, few weeks, three weeks, I've been extremely laser focused on getting new customers and getting new affiliates who can get customers. So that's number one is being laser focused and really being really clear about what you're trying to do, what your outcome is, what you're looking for. You send to give without expecting anything in return. That's important. Um, and uh, let's see. And so, and and you want, you want to send to give. Uh, <laughs> I talked about being laser focused and I just lost my focus. Um, you send to give without expecting anything in return. But in terms of building the business, you want to be very intentional and focused. And what intentionality means, what being intentional means is be really upfront and clear about what you're looking for at the beginning of every conversation. So it's okay to say to somebody why you're meeting with them. If you're meeting with them to show them our system, like to say, I really love this system and I get great value from it. And I think you will too. And I want to show it to you like being that intentional, being really upfront and clear. And, and that way there's nothing hidden. You're not being manipulative, manipulative in any way. You're just being really clear about, a, about what, and then there's the relationship, which is separate, right? There's the relationship. So for example, uh, Robbie LeBlanc, who's one of our affiliates, um, he's rocking Santa. You might've seen him on my Facebook feed. And uh, Robbie is an extraordinary uh, he, he's an extraordinary musician. Uh, I think I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I think he might be Juilliard trained. I'm not a hundred percent sure about that, but he was definitely trained. Um, he's musically trained at a very, very high level. And he got a gig playing for the MMA. He did the, he wore a Santa outfit with his big white beard, sunglasses and his electric guitar. And he played the star spangled banner at a MMA fight, which was really, really cool. I was at the fight last night in Vegas. Robbie got me special VIP seats. Thank you for that, Robbie. I'm sure you'll watch this uh, tonight or tomorrow. And I, he introduced me to a guy that is in charge, or he's, he, he oversees the alumni for the NFL. 
big black guy that uh, I, I never, I, I'd never heard of the guy before, but he's, I guess he's a big dude. He's been to over a hundred countries and um, he puts together events for the alumni and for the NFL. And so anyway, I sit next to this guy and I, the purpose, my purpose for sitting next to him was get to know him. Like I wanted to learn about him. I wasn't going to pitch what I was doing. He asked me what I did and I told him, but I didn't get into any detail, but I promise you, I will be doing that on Robbie's behalf uh, with Robbie. We will be presenting to him exactly how it works. We'll show him how it works. Uh, I do have his address. I got his business card, but that whole fight, we sat next to each other for two hours, nothing but conversation because my focus on the evening last night was to get to know him, to build a relationship with him. So I asked him a lot of questions. He asked me a lot of questions. We talked about the fights. I didn't know any of the fighters, but it was really exciting action. And we were right up front. It was really cool. Um, but, but then when we do the business part of it, it's all about the business. It's focused on the business. And if you do that, people will treat you differently than if you're just doing it casually, kind of casually. They'll, they'll treat you differently if you're just intentional. Um, number two, uh, podcasts. So again, everything I do is designed to get customers. So most of you, not all of you, but most of you, if you were invited onto a podcast, you could talk about relationship marketing. If the person invite, if the person asked you questions, you could talk about our cards. You could talk about relationship marketing. You could talk about, you could tell a couple of stories. Podcasts go really fast. And I know you don't all feel comfortable with that, but that's okay. It's something that's to strive for is if you set an intention to say, you know what, I'm going to be on one podcast a month. I'm going to look for podcasters. And if you're new at it, find podcasters that are new and they're looking for guests and figure out what your message is and have a couple of stories. Most of you have heard a lot of the stories that Cody tells. You can share Cody's story. You can tell the stories of promptings and the power of promptings. And you don't need to be intimidated by that because you've been around it and you're living it by sending out cards. You probably have some store card stories. And so usually in a podcast, you either send the podcaster the questions in advance that they're going to ask you. So you know what they're going to ask you. You know, when, when you watch the news, those, everything's scripted, all of those, all the, all the questions that are being asked, most of that is scripted. And on a podcast, you ask the podcaster to give you the questions in advance so you can prepare, or you give them the questions. You can even ask them to give them the questions. And so podcast gives you exposure to more people. And the best scenario is you sponsor the podcaster as an affiliate, and then you're on as a guest working on their behalf. People, there's a lot of you, like I can, I could make a list of probably 15 of you or 20 of you that are totally prepared to be on podcasts right now. And if you find the newer podcasters, the ones that are, they're amateur podcasters, they're just getting started, just like the amateur fighters that kicked off the first five fights last night, then they got into the pros. Some of you might consider yourself amateur podcast or amateur uh, guests on podcasts. Well, find amateur podcasters. They might have smaller audiences, but at least you get practice and you get uh, experience doing it. And then you'll get on bigger and bigger podcasts. The third one is stages. The third one is stages. So first is laser focus. Second is podcast. Third is stages. And a stage is um, just what it is, you know, and in the beginning, uh, your stage might be five people, or it might be 10 people in a conference room. That's a stage. It might be a zoom with five people. So the, think about the people you meet. It's almost like in the old Tupperware days, if you booked a party, the person that ran the party would ask the people in the room, would you like to have a party? And I'll give you some gifts if you invite some people. So what if you sent somebody one of our nice send out cards gifts if they have a get together and invite some of their friends? And you do a little holiday card sending Zoom with 10 people, that's a stage, stages. So I've you've noticed probably on my Facebook feed, I've been on a lot of stages over the past few weeks. And I'm intentionally looking for those stages. So when I do a meeting, like I did this real estate presentation for a hundred people a couple of days ago, that I was meeting a lot of people. I stayed for the whole day, even though I only spoke for a half hour, I stayed for the whole day and met a lot of people. And I, as I'm meeting people, I'm asking questions and I found out some of them work out of offices. Some of them work in mortgage companies. 
Some of them have a lot of agents underneath them because they're in a network marketing structured real estate company. And so I asked them, would you ever want me to come in and do a, uh, an overview for your team so that they could benefit from our product? So you want to look for stages. That's another example. Then number four, these probably should be in a different order. Just the simple demos. Like I'm doing two, three, four demos a day. You could do the same thing. We talk about that a lot on these Monday nights is just, um, you know, asking those three questions we've talked about on previous podcasts, like uh, what advice might you give me? Um, do you have anybody you think I need to meet? And then talk about possible collaboration, working together. Um, and then also, of course, just sending a card to somebody from the app and having them watch you do it, setting up a free account and have them send a card and you coach them through sending the card and then you follow up with a card, maybe a gift, a small gift. Um, but those demos, those daily demos, you know, so you've got podcasts, maybe it's a little more big picture, made more long-term, but setting it out as an intention, stages, which would be like getting groups of people together. Maybe you could offer a gift if they'll, pull together five people so that you could talk with that group of people and you can hold up cards, share examples, tell stories, show the app on the, on the podcast. If, if you have that opportunity or on the stages, rather, if you have that opportunity, number five is related to demos and that's just giving presentations. Um, there's so much material you have to be able to do that. And if there's any questions on that, we've got lots of videos that explain. I have, I even have a video how to do a group presentation. I think I have a YouTube video on that. Number six, um, exposure to new people, always networking and meeting new people, however you do that, whether it's online or offline. Some of you are using LinkedIn to meet new people. Some of you are in groups on Facebook to meet new people. And some of you are at BNI meetings to meet new people. But having that as an intention. And then with holidays coming around, we've got, we've got holiday parties as well. And again, a holiday party, you don't want to talk about send out cards unless they ask about it. And then you want to keep your conversations fairly brief. You can give a, de you can give a demo at a holiday party. If you're sending them a card, you know, take a picture of people in their Christmas, you know, sweater or whatever, and then send them a card and have you watch them do it, have them watch you do it rather. And that's a, that's a, that's a, a type of a presentation. And then later you can, you know, show them the sales page and talk to them about the different programs and things like that after the party, but use the party to build those relationships. But, what a great opportunity to take pictures and send cards. And then uh, the last one is affiliates lead to users. So um, in everything I do is designed to get customers. You know, I'm looking for people that, you know, maybe have organizations that might want to have a uh, be an affiliate. I typically am not focused on network marketing organizations because they've got issues a lot of times with, you know, it's one thing for them to be a user, but it's another thing for them to promote our network marketing opportunity within their network marketing opportunity. So I'm very careful about that for them. Um, some of them insist, some of them say, I love this and I want to promote it. And I'm like, that's, I don't want you to get in any trouble, but if you're okay with it and they're okay with it. Then let's work together. But you want to put yourself in a position. I'm trying to, what I'm trying to do is give you ideas that will help you grow. Um, that will help you grow beyond the limitations of what you've set on yourself because so many of you are capable of podcasts. You're capable of the stages. You're capable of doing demos. You're capable of giving those presentations, but you're not doing it. A lot of you are, some of you are, I should say, but so many of you are capable of doing it. And the only reason you haven't done it is because you might be afraid. And the truth is, once you start doing it, you're going to find out it's not as hard or as challenging um, as you think it is. And I, I'll be honest, I mean, I've been doing this a long time. And this sounds crazy, I know, but I, I've been doing this a long time and I still have those fears creep up. Like, like, what did I get myself into here? And then once I'm in there doing it, um, and as long as I prepare a little bit, I'm good and you'll be good too. So I do want to emphasize one more time that when I send my cards, 90% of them are personal heartfelt cards and 10% are designed, they're business related, like where I'm showing them something or sending out a card with the plans or that kind of stuff. So I hope this was helpful. Got into a lot of stuff tonight and uh, you guys have a great week. Listen, 
enjoy your Thanksgiving with whoever you're with, whether it's friends or family, and just be thankful for what's good in your life. And uh, as Cody said, be thankful for the challenges as well, because they lead you to the good things. Anyway, I would, I'm very grateful that I had that episode last week because if I, because I'm finding a new level of health that I've never had in my whole life. And uh, that came as a result of a bunch of pain last week. So I'm good. So anyway, love you guys. Have a great week. Happy Thanksgiving. Talk to you soon. God bless.